Content warning. This video contains a plumber, and is therefore about as interesting as gluing your asshole shut. Did somebody say instant hot water? Probably not, but nonetheless, this is happening. An Ariston 30 litre instant hot water heater. So we go into this space here. So this cupboard's got to go out. And uh, the installation is going to be undertaken by my good self and uh, my good man Phil the fucking plumber. No Nigel today because he's on some kind of cycling proficiency test for his motor cycle, so he's riding around road cones or whatever it is he does in his high vis jacket. Uh, so it's just the two of us, just the two workers today. Uh, we've got a panelled ceiling here, I've got to take that down, I've got to get that cupboard down. Let's go and have a look at the it's above here, shall we? At the business end. Airing cupboard directly above. I wonder if this is the original tank to the house, or if this is a later addition. Hmm. I'll ask Phil for his opinion on that. This is all largely redundant. So there's no central heating anymore, so this is just doing the hot water but probably not as efficiently as one would like, hence the change to an instant solution. So at the moment that's fed from its own dedicated FDD circuit, or a mechanical timer, and that's on a 16 amp uh, RCBO FDD supply. Exciting times, yes? No, probably not. And yes, this is at Shea Savory, so I have full control over this particular installation. Lights, lights would be handy. Water heater, 16 amp AFDD. On, off. Marvellous. Just waiting for Phil to get here. Then we'll have a coffee, then we'll have a chinwag, then we'll have another coffee, and then we'll get started. Maybe after another coffee. I use a plumber, can't rush these things. So I'm just waiting for him to pull up and uh, maybe I'll have a coffee while I'm waiting or a cigar. That's a jolly good idea. Open your ears and stop your bleeding. Dave is gonna talk about Before Phil turns up and makes the ruddy place all smell of plumber, I suppose I'd better blab about hot water tanks. At least in a simplistic way, which is all you should expect from an electrician describing how plumbing works. Not that plumbing is complicated, I'm sure. It's simply beneath me. Before combi boilers started becoming commonplace in the late 1990s, houses heated by gas, such as here in my late 60s grief hole, employed a tank for the storage of hot water. The gas boiler warmed both the radiators for space heating and water in a separate closed loop deep within this tank to warm the volume of water it contained. The mains pressure cold pipe is at the bottom of the tank, the output pipe to the hot taps is at the top. With the taps closed, the cold supply cannot push into the tank and the water it holds remains warm, at least if the tank and pipes are properly insulated and lagged to prevent the heat from dissipating. When a hot tap is turned on, the cold water under pressure at the bottom of the tank forces the warm water out of the top and through the pipes to the outlet. With the tank located on an upper floor, gravity assists to produce a reasonable faucet flow. However, a single storey flat may employ a pump to help push through the pipes. Not the case here, so we'll ignore that shit. All very simple, but the obvious disadvantage of this setup is that once the tank is depleted of warm water, one would have to fire up the gas boiler and wait for however long it takes to heat the fucking thing up from cold again. This can lead to an inter-family fracas if one teenage little shit likes to hog the water for a prolonged shower, or there are several people resident, all trying to share the same limited supply. I'm sure I speak both for myself and for you out there watching by saying we've all personally experienced this many a time. I certainly have. Most of us in the past have, I'm sure, looked forward to lighting the scented candles, pouring a large glass of something alcoholic, and flossing our arse thoroughly on the nearest towel to hand to ensure we won't leave skid marks on the bottom of the relaxing deep hot bath we intend to enjoy, only to find when turning on the steaming hot tap and pouring in half a bottle of matey bubble bath that the water too quickly turns tepid 
resulting in a disappointing experience where we have to run it lukewarm just to get any kind of depth. And even then, our beer belly remains islanded out in the cold air, and we have to keep swamping the water over our balls to stop them from frosting over. Uh, that's not to leave out the female viewers. You may, of course, relate to what I describe better if you substitute beer belly and balls for uh, tits and growler. Uh, close your eyes and you can just picture it all, can't you? I'm sure I speak both for myself and for you out there watching by saying we've all personally experienced this many a time. Uh, I certainly have. But yes, an eighth of a tub of lukewarm water does not make for a satisfying soak with accompanying relaxing wank. Indeed, quite the opposite, and all that elbow work around the waterline, rather than under it, makes for enough audible splashing to get the curious banging on the bathroom door to ask what on earth we're doing in there. And usually just at the critical jack-in-the-box moment too. I'm sure I speak both for myself and for you out there watching by saying we've all personally experienced this many a time. I, I certainly have. Yes, it's no good. Simply no good at all. The advent of combi boilers, which heat cold water on demand, sanded the death knell for most domestic water tanks. In the UK, it's extremely common to find homes built up to the end of the 1990s where there used to be a tank, but where it has subsequently been removed as the traditional gas boiler has been replaced by a combi. That's all well and good for those with gas, but dwellings which are electric only tend to still have a hot water tank, and instead of the closed loop heated by gas, they use electric heaters immersed in the water. Immersion heaters, if you will. Often, two of these are fitted, one toward the top of the tank and one toward the bottom, although in houses like mine where the water tank used to be heated by gas, there's just the one immersion and that's there as a backup to provide warm water in case the gas boiler ever fails. Being electric only means my single top tank immersion heater has been my only source of water heating to serve the sinks and bath for the past eight years. The bottom heater, if present, will heat all the water, albeit it'll take a while depending on the tank size. The top heater, known as the boost heater, heats only the water at the top of the tank, and because it's heating a lower volume of water, it's quicker, but there's less of it. The boost heater is therefore handy if you need something for hand washing or for tackling the washing up after the tank has otherwise been exhausted of the warm stuff. For homes on a dual rate tariff, it was common for the lower heater to click on in the small hours to heat the whole tank on a cheap rate, ready for the morning's ablutions leaving the boost heater at the homeowner's discretion should they need a top-up during the day, albeit on the more expensive peak rate. Each heating element is around 3 kilowatts and should employ a thermostat which protrudes into a pocket set within the tank. The thermostat is usually set at around 65 Celsius and will click the element on and off as needed for as long as it's powered. There are two schools of thought as to whether you should leave an immersion running 24-7 or not, some would say leaving it on keeps a warm tank topped up rather than having to reheat it from cold every day. Others would say it's going to dissipate heat however well insulated and lagged it may be, meaning you're paying to constantly replace those losses. I never did figure out which way was right, and perhaps it depends on any individual setup anyway. Electrically, you can test an immersion element easily enough, as a 240 volt 3 kilowatt element should draw about 12.5 amps when operating or report back about 19 ohms if tested dead with an ohm meter. If it reads open circuit, the element has split. If it reads substantially lower, it's failed short circuit. It should also have a high insulation resistance between its life parts and any earthed metalwork, such as the copper water tank, of course. From my experience, most reports of hot water being not are down to a failure of the thermostat more than anything else. It's also wise on inspections to look out for installations that either don't have a thermostat or whose thermostat is not of a modern design. There have been cases of injury and even the horrific death of a baby in 2006 when an immersion element boiled the water in the tank, causing it to steam into a plastic header tank in the loft, which then deformed and split from the heat, causing boiling water to rain down through the ceiling into her cot below. That itself may be an argument against running an immersion 24-7, but if you notice the water coming out of the hot tap is routinely too heated to handle, that's a sign the thermostat has either failed or it's set too high for comfort. 
As I mentioned, in my own semi-detached den of shame, the water tank was designed to be heated by the gas boiler, so only a boost immersion at the top of the tank was ever fitted, which is why I haven't experienced the luxury of a deep hot bath or a radox ham shandy in the past eight fucking years. With the gas capped off and kicked out in 2014, this has been my only way of warming water for use at the sinks. I have an electric shower, so the tank's not needed for that, and the boost heater runs for an hour every day to heat what it can. As the taps get used, some of that water is drained off as the cold pushes in from below to replace it. Over several hours, the heat ends up dissipating through the tank, the pipes, and into the cold water below, meaning any water I've paid to heat up will cool again if not used. It's probably not an efficient solution. Certainly, this water system is not running as designed. Time then to rip out the remnants of the old gas system and to modernise my warm water ways, even if it does still mean I can't submerge my sausage and sprouts in a decent bloody bath. Now that we know how hot water works, let's see it installed by a couple of bucks. Here he is. Man of the moment. Have you got you haven't got a boiler though, have you? Used to have, so a lot of this is redundant. Oh, uh, that's fine then. Yes. Have you got any tanks in the loft? Obviously, you got there's one tank that feeds us, but so I'm guessing. Well, we'll have there was a header up. tank in the loft that I that been... capped off. I okay, put a valve yeah, on it. Yeah. Okay. And so that's I'm... empty. We can go up there and have a look. Most of this should be dead then. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And there's no central heating. That's... The boiler's all gone. The rads have all gone. So these pipes ought to be defunct for the most part. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's some very funky wiring over the pipes there. I'm not showing that on video. <laughs> but then, you know, it's, it's like builders' houses, isn't it? You, uh, yeah. So. That's, uh, okay. Builders' house is the worst house you can buy. If I get a hose pipe then, I'll put that onto the... Um, we'll just have to turn the water off then, so... If Drain the tank, turn the water off. I don't think that's going to be a prompt in the water off. Everyone's <laughs> breakfasted. I want to put any water by because we might be off for a little bit. I'll have to disconnect whatever, however all this is connected up. I presume that um, I've watched a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon that's an original tank to the this 70s uh, property or what, late 60s property or is it no, something new? I don't think so. There's been a few alterations, look, which may suggest that that is a second or another not original tank. Right. I mean, I don't know how efficient all this is. We generally, the well, timer it's... switches it on for about an hour a day mm. to give us a bit of warm water for hand washing. Yeah, well, if you're using that just to wash your hands, you're heating all of that water up, yeah. which is... What? It's a big tank for a few... Yeah, uh, and also more. 24 hours later the water's cold so it's obviously losing that heat yeah, over the time that's right. I mean it looks Although fairly well insulated, insulated yeah but you're only heating it for one hour so I yeah. doubt you're like you're not heating all of it up no no it, mm -hmm. this is part of the problem you're is just, that you're only ever because it's a boost heater it's at the yeah, top of the tank you're it. only ever heating the top of the tank so you can't fill the bath with it no. because you get you know I don't know a quarter or halfway down and the water's cold <laughs> So the bath's fucking useless. But then uh, we need someone to come and refit the bathroom. <laughs> do you know any decent plumber <laughs> who can come and do bathrooms? Uh, yeah. That's it. Right. Let's get a hose pipe on there and we'll start draining some water down. Exciting stuff. There's a cup of tea downstairs. For real? I, I imagine we've got to keep them coming, you being a plumber. Yeah. <laughs> Philip's just fiddling with my cock. It's like a dream come true, isn't it, Philip? It's quite stiff. Twist that shaft. So uh, Philip was saying, off camera, that uh, he could install, what was it, a um, lime scale reducer. reducer yes, because it's a very hard water area, this isn't it, Philip? Yeah. And, uh, lime scale is a particular bugbear of the wife. Right, that... I think that's on. It is Hopefully. dropping down, yeah. Ceiling's down. That was a panelled ceiling that was put up many moons ago. Not fire rated or anything, so we'll be putting something else there. Well, I will be eventually. 
with some funky new lighting, I think. I do like a funky lighting project. Can you see where you need to see for pipes? Are we gonna we're we gonna put it there? That's the idea is to put it there, but the airing cupboard I suppose is through it's there, further. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well you can see the pipes are going through there somewhere. Okay. Probably got access by pulling at the boards at the bottom of the airing cupboard. Yeah. They get into all sorts of glamorous locations like this, don't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. These things are always a pain. Duff valve, do you think? Yeah. Uh, yes, we have a trickle now, yeah. yeah. Right, I've got to get this electrical supply shifted. Phil the plumber is deep in plumbing territory. So you've cut the hot or cold feed, haven't you? Yeah, we've and cut we've... them off. So they're completely out of the way, and we're just getting rid of the old heating that wasn't even on anyway. Yeah, long since dead that. And then we can remove all this out of the way. <laughs> Alright, let's go down here. I've got to find a route through, because this needs to be hardwired from the front through the back. Oh, there's a bracket on the wall. It's proper bolted on. I've got to get my cable up through there somewhere. I've got some heat resistant flex to put onto this thing to join it into where the old immersion circuit used to be. Ah, exciting times. I'll tell you what, Phil, that was a hard hour and a half or so of work. <laughs> I think we need a break, don't we? Absolutely, and a sausage sandwich. Are you, are you a brown sauce or red sauce? Uh, I'll go red. <laughs> okay, a bit weird, but no, that floats your boat. We, we've had to, we've told the wife anyway that we've had to come out for parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll go half and half. Yeah, yeah. The ACDC is our Philip. <laughs> well, anyway, bon appetit, old man. Cheers, thank you. these, get, get our parts, <laughs> and then get back onto the job. That's it. <laughs> It's got to be near lunchtime anyway. <laughs> it's time for the ceremonial hanging of the beast. Oh, fucking hell. It's a young man's game, this, Philip. Let's hope this bracket's up to snuff, otherwise, someone's going to get fucking brain the next time they take a shit. Just to put a bit of weight on it at the back. That's it. That's it. Okay. Heat resistant flex. Don't know if it needs heat resistant flex, but have heat resistant flex. Shall use it. I'll oh, just get the, get the camera in there. Fucking plumber standing around doing nothing as always. Uh, bootlace ferrules on the uh, wiring and a crimp on that one because it's stranded cable. Proper job here, Philip. Okay. Wouldn't bother anybody else's house, but as it's mine. <laughs> so your idea is to, you're gonna come off there with your peeps. Yeah. Marvellous. Oh, well, I should get out of your way. You don't need an asshole in your way, do you? Thanks. I don't suppose there's too much more I can do at the moment, unless there's something I can further assist with. Bring those around and... I pulled my immersion heater from the airing cupboard into here. There was enough slack to pull it out of the wall and get it into there. Uh, so we're going to be putting a maintenance-free junction connection onto that to get it out of the way. Let's get some more pipe on. I suppose I ought to put a, an isolator on it really, shouldn't I? A local two-pole isolator, 20 amp isolator. Pretty handy, wasn't it? Would be handy. Rather a shame I didn't do that in the fucking airing cupboard <laughs> instead of putting that wire back down. Too late now. I'll have to think about that. I suppose there's a certain skill to this water Lego, isn't there? Yeah, not making it leak. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's all far too mechanical for my liking, Philip. I much prefer uh, electrical things. You don't have to think too hard about them. Wire A goes to wire B. As you know, it's a piece of piss. Same with water. Hot 
to hot, cold to cold. I don't know, I've come across a few plums before that are but to uh, hot to cold and cold to hot. What, uh, steaming hot? Uh, yeah, so you finish the loo and steam comes out, yeah. <laughs> Nigel's of someone who's done that. <laughs> Electrically, I've decided I am going to put an isolator in. I'm going to stick it up there. I'm going to put a fan isolator in as well, because there was no fan isolator previously on the old fan. The old fan wired in a bit of two core there. Again, it was all done a long time ago. And it needs to be done properly now. I think it was, oh, when was it? 2005, that this mess that used to be the kitchen was turned into a utility room and this WC was put in. So uh, predates my time. Uh, a few things I don't like up there that are being changed. There's uh, a screw junction that's being replaced for a maintenance free junction. Uh, the two core cable to the fan will become a three core cable and a timed vent taxi is going to go in. There'll be a fused fan isolator on the fan. There'll be a 20 amp isolator up there. So for the water tank, which is on its own 16 amp AFDD RCBO circuit. So it all ought to be a lot better by the time it's been dicked around with. Not decoratively anyway, it's going to look pretty, uh, pretty awful. Someone needs to put a lick of paint around in there. I suppose that'll be my task one weekend. Thanks for that, Phil. The trouble is, as we were saying while we were eating our sausage sandwich and drinking our coffee and not doing any work, <laughs> it's quite hard, isn't it, when you're out on the tools all week? Yeah, to... the house gets neglected. Yeah, I was saying to Phil, I get home and I, I fall asleep at like four o'clock in the afternoon or whatever time we I get back. Four hours a day. It, it's, it takes it out of you, it fucking does. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how hard I'm working now. I, I've had to cut a hole in the wall there for the fucking fan isolator into the plasterboard. That took minutes of my time, that did. <laughs> We're not all young like you, you know, Phil. So yes, yeah, when you're working on the tools, finding time to maintain your own gaff is somewhat troublesome. You know how blokes look to play with fire? Phil's currently making the uppy pipey bit here, aren't you, Phil? Yeah. The pressure vessel, did you say? Expansion this is the, thing? Yeah, for the expansion vessel. Expansion vessel. On the cold pipe, and then we've got a pressure relief valve coming off here. Oh. All very technical. It's all rather complicated, really, isn't it? It is quite complicated. Mm. But easy when you know how. <laughs> so you're not just making it up as you go along? Well, yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Philip's still working hard away while I have my afternoon coffee. <laughs> I've still got to do that complicated bit up there. The clever bit, eh, Phil? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Any asshole can set fire to stuff, but <laughs> it takes a particular kind of asshole to connect up wires. Of course, if this goes on YouTube, there'll be loads of people going, oh, he's not doing that right, oh, I don't like the way he's doing that, or oh, he's done that all wrong. Do you reckon most installers would use plastic pipes for that, or is it always copper for this sort of thing? Well, that's it. We're using proper stuff, aren't we? Mm -hmm. The best way. You see, you're oh, not some sure. uh, not with some fucking checker trade wanker here. This is <laughs> Phil, the fucking plumber. That's it. No plastic fill. <laughs> <laughs> fill in his copper rod. <laughs> Someone will probably loop, loop that round. Oh, yeah, nice yeah. Bit of plastic. yeah. Probably so you could put a coat hanger or something on it. Yeah, you know? all bent and not secure to the wall. And yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that for all the, the armchair experts out there who no doubt will say, that's not right. There'll be plenty out there going, oh, I would have just fucked that over in plastic in no time at all. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I like to think Phil does a Pretty proper job. job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's looking rather mechanically impressive, Philip. That less so, because it looks like you've absolutely walloped the shit out of the box in there. I think that, I think you found that was you. <laughs> yeah, well, it needed doing. It was all rotten anyway, and we need. To, I say we. This is the royal we, of course. Yeah. <laughs> the only we that's going to be doing by, by me in that room is going straight down the pan. But you, Philip, old man, with your skills, need to sort out that diabolical mess down there. And you're you're going to put on a what was it? A scale reducer. A scale inhibitor. That's it. No less. And uh, a rather wonderful word that you've introduced me to, which is the tundish. <laughs> There's something extremely pleasing about the word tundish. It's, it's the kind of word one would like to give a good fingering to, don't you? Tundish. Don't you agree? Tundish. It's just 
Yeah. You got to make that's a good word. I don't know what Tundish does, but it just uh, um, allows you to see if the safety valve is dripping. Oh, I say, a dripping Tundish. <laughs> we, we we have two Tundishes, or is it two two Tundish eye? <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the one that came with the yeah, but the thing. So th this one, as you can see. It, it, the smell could come back because this has got to go mm, to mm. to drain. So we've purchased this one, yes. which has a non-return valve to stop the stop the nasty nips. Yeah, it's coming back. So we'll use this one. Who knew there were two types of tundish? That's it. Everybody watching this probably in the comments going, "Oh, I know all about tundishes." <laughs> we're probably doing this wrong as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah. But, uh, we're it's a natural impasse for day one. Not that we're anywhere near the close of day one, but. Uh, <laughs> You, the next job is to turn off the water and to get all this piped in. Oh, wow. But my next job before that happens is to do get some of these electrics sorted out and for the lighting and the fan in preparation for a new fan because I'm taking the opportunity to change the fan for a Ventaxi arm. And I don't know what I'll be changing the lighting to or what I'll be doing with the ceiling, but that's future Dave's problem and that guy's an asshole. I don't like him. <laughs> so, you know, we'll have to see what happens there. But for now, some, some wiring needs sorting out, so I should do that and once you've... Spare the time this evening. Yes, that's, that's my evening job. Well, it won't take long to sort that out. And then uh, tomorrow morning, Phil comes along with his crowbar again, smashes more shit out of the place, causes more damage, sticks his ton dish in and his inhibitor, and uh, hopefully it's hot water for all. That's it. We can strip off and jump in the bath. Wow. <laughs> Dream come true for you. <laughs> God, we'll have Nigel with us tomorrow as well. So <laughs> it might be. Uh, we can get three in a bath. Yeah. We have to do some experimentation. Quite on tight. <laughs> might not film that. <laughs> right. Yeah. See you in the morning. <laughs> Bright and early on day two. That's it. Nigel's on his way, and unfortunately. Nigel has apparently passed his bike test. Oh. Yeah, I know. We're going to hear all about this today. You know, um, <laughs> you know, Forrest Gump, the character Bubba Blue, is always talking about shrimp. Yeah. You can brine it, you can barbecue it, you can <laughs> steam it. That's basically Nigel uh, on talking about, about motorbikes. Bikes. Yeah, <laughs> so fuck it out. <laughs> you can you can just chop out hours and pick up the next scene, and, and it will still be going on about. There's you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's amazing, <laughs> Nigel. And I understand you're the best biker ever in the world, according to your instructor. <laughs> so uh, yes, yeah, so he'll be turning up today without his learner plates. We'll have to get a picture of him as he rolls up with a big fucking grin on his face. <laughs> Maybe we can make him buy the coffees because once he gets here, we are going to go to our coffee hole. So you're going to be you're you're having to be out by lunchtime today, aren't you, Philip? You're going to be fitting a. Uh, inhibitor onto the cold water feed there, I understand. Yeah. Whatever the scale, whatever that does. The scale reducer. Scale inhibitor. reducer. Yes. Yeah. Quite is that quite important for an expensive beastie such as this? Do you think? Uh, well, it's not going to hurt, is it? It, no. it was definitely going to hopefully help reduce any scale build up on. Well, this one's on the whole house, so it will help all of the appliances as well which is always good it is a hard water area we are hard yeah. for it here that's right so in Leamington spa that will be going somewhere there um, and you'll be pleased to hear we are going to leave you alone this morning because we're Nigel back on the van <laughs> and with the electrics complete because I've now uh, I've got the new fan yeah. up and I've moved the sensor up there which doesn't oh, work yeah. very well so I've got to do something about that oh. And Why, there's, because it's on this yeah, side, yeah, on yeah it's, it's not a very sensitive sense. It's always been a bit problematic that one, so I've got to get another one. Yeah. And I've cut in the fan isolator and the 20 amp switch on this side for that thing. Mm -hmm. Not that I really needed a 20 amp switch. It's on a two pole AFDD just just over there, but it's, it's not beyond one's means That's to it. install such. So we just await Nigel arriving and then we'll go and uh, we'll all go and have a coffee and hear all about it from him. Where's the learner plates? Fuck off with you, <laughs> Well, we've been here for ages waiting for you. What, since half seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it, yeah. We've been working hard already, haven't we, Phil? That's it. Nigel. 
David. We have a, a dirty plumber in our hole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not just any dirty plumber, of course, but the fucking plumber. It's unusual for us to do coffee shout outs in the middle of a video because we haven't finished this one yet. Haven't we? No. Which video <laughs> is it? <laughs> you know, it's, about, it's, it's the water heater video that Phil and I have been <laughs> so working so hard on. I know nothing about it. Yeah, well, you've just turned up, haven't you? Oh, well, half a job, Nigel. <laughs> I've been off, I've been busy. Yeah, that's the trouble. So, uh, yeah, busy passing your test. I'm a motorbikeist now. So, uh, we are going to go off and do some proper work today, proper electrical work, while Phil a bit of peace and quiet has a bit of peace and quiet own. and plums in the beast. That's it. I'm very excited <clears> to see <throat> the beast in action. Quick coffee shout out at uh, starting with a familiar name of ours, which is Andy Carouche. You yeah. should say it actually, being the, the guest. Andy Carouche? Is that Andy correct? <laughs> yes. Manx surname. Ah, okay. There you go. Our, our man That's from it. the Manx. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Uh, Andy Carew says he'll only contribute uh, if we promise not to do another board change video for at least three months because everyone's sick of board change videos. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> they are boring, aren't they? They are, they are fucking boring. Everyone's doing them. Uh, let me just fire that up, uh, Nigel. Ah. I can see Andy Carew. Yes. That's because that's the only name we got to shout out this week. <laughs> <laughs> One name. Thanks, Andy <laughs> Quickest coffee shout out ever. No super wank. No, no super wank. No well, mention. thank you, Andy. You deserve a shout out all to yourself for being, in fact, a super wank, even though he's not. You heard it here first. <laughs> well, I, I, to be fair, we did just record a shout out on Friday. We did, only with just. With several names on a video that. Hasn't been edited together yet, but hopefully will be before this one goes out. Otherwise, that's going to be embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> the only other thing to um, to say is that we went out for a sausage sandwich yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. And what do you think about this? Phil put red sauce. No, sausage no, sandwich. no. <laughs> Brown sauce on sausages and bacon, red sauce on eggs. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything at the time, but... I was well, I rather horrified. Half I mean, and half. You did, you did half and half Best it. Best of both. But, but no, I'm sorry, Phil. No good. You're an that's, asshole. That's <laughs> typical plumber behaviour, though. <laughs> it's just uh, not right. This looks very technical, Philip. Very technical. Look at that. No, George's yeah. cutting off. To oh, yeah, yeah. So you're ready for the big switchy on here? Yeah. Right. I suppose we better do that, then. Right. We are... Shoehorned in to the well, AFDD. No, no. It's only just started recording. Okay. We are shoehorned into the AFDD. AFDD on, meter on. I'm just going to reset that because what we're going to do when we commission this, it's going to fire up to two and a half kilowatts and heat up the 30 litre capacitoire. Come on, fuck it now, reset. And then once it's got that to temperature, it ought to hopefully maintain that over a 24 hour period of normal use without being too thirsty on the energy. We know that the immersion heater that it replaced used three kilowatts and for an hour every day. You ready, Mr. Phil? Yeah. Power on. Oh, I've got, some, got some blue lights. Well, this is a very night rider, right? see that? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually read the instructions, which probably would have been quite sensible, really, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. No, that's off. Enough. That's on. <laughs> that means it's heating. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it. Uh, well, let's have a look at the meter. 2.8 kilowatts. What we'll do is we'll use this as an excuse to go and have a coffee. Because <laughs> that's going to take a good quarter of an hour or so, I thought, to heat up perhaps more than that. 30 litres. It's quite a lot. I suppose it's not going to get to boiling though, is it? No. So maybe maybe not quite that long. And we'll see what reading we get when we come back. That'll give us an indicative figure of how long it takes to heat from cold. And then I'll monitor it for 24 hours and we'll see how long it's or how much energy it uses over an average period. Very good. Yes. In the meantime, let's lunch. <laughs> two o'clock. How's it two o'clock? I know, it's flown by today. It's plumbing jobs, eh? Pain in the arse. <laughs> Hard work today. <laughs> right, we'll bring these up and go and see if this thing has pissed out water everywhere. Hopefully not. Yeah, well, hopefully not. <laughs> 
suppose if, if we've got a dirty plumber on the van, we could play the van game of you have to shag the next person on the left, Nigel, and <laughs> yeah. you'll have to shag the next person on the right. <laughs> All right, okay. And what about you? I just get to watch with a hand out of shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We're not going to see anybody now, are we? Phil and I were on the van yeah. yesterday, we did play this game, and Phil managed to get a lot of dog walking. They've all got dogs in <laughs> them. Oh. Oh, 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 dear, nice. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Unlucky. Oh, no. How come I always get the blokes? <laughs> he says, oh, no, he's secretly pleased. Yeah. Yes. What van games do you play, Phil? We like to play Spot First Christmas Tree of the Season. We do. That, we, that, do we play that around November time, of course. <laughs> oh, look, there's someone crossing oh, over oh, there. Yeah, he's on your side. So. No, 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 he's on the right. He crossed the road just for you, Phil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nobody's going to buy us a coffee for this, are they? <laughs> I think Andy Carew was oh, perhaps the last coffee to make so everybody else is <laughs> clicking that unsubscribe button as we speak. <laughs> it was a good run while it lasted. Cat's found somewhere to sit. Still getting Anytime you put a cardboard box down, this cat always likes to sit on it or in it. Right, it's illuminated. That last light's flashing, so I guess it's still getting up to temperature. We never noted what time we switched it on, which is rather uh, ridiculous. Annoying, mm -hmm. seeing as we were timing out on it. Yeah. <laughs> That didn't go according to plan, did it? But we are still burning 2.7 kilowatts. Are you checking your, your Google tracking? Mm. Doesn't work on my phone, neither does my selfie camera. You've broken it. Oh, yeah, I've dropped it three times too many or something. <laughs> 12.43. No. No, 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 no. Yeah, twelve forty three we left here, didn't we? No. no. It's too... Oh no, no, sorry. <laughs> I was looking earlier before oh, rugby. Um no, just difficulty sending the time. Thirteen forty eight. So yeah. half an hour. Yeah. The categories. <laughs> a watched pot never boils, and neither does a watched Ariston, but I don't see any sign of any leak, so Phil's done his job. We ought to have... Can you plug that light in, please, Nigel? Philip, would you like to... Um, to fuck off in there, out of my way? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that is, Nigel? That black thing there? That's... A uh, non-return valve, isn't it? It's a ball valve. No, that'd it? be a nice hole. <laughs> huh? It's a ton dish. Oh, is that where it's, it's called? Dish. Which we were talking about yesterday is a rather marvellous word. Don't you agree? No. <laughs> you don't find that a pleasing word, tundish? No. Okay, your opinion. It's just my opinion. <laughs> you asked for it. You got it. So explain to me all the various bits and bobs, if you would, Philip. We know the thing with lift on it is a... Scale reducer. Scale or... reducer. Inhibitor. What's the, the black thing above that? That's a pressure reducing valve, just in case the pressure was to be above 3.5 bar. I say. And then we've got a little expansion vessel there. Thank you, Kobe. You can't quite see it, but there's a non-return valve behind that. And then we've got a pressure relief valve on the cold, just in case that was to build up. But it shouldn't because of the pressure reducing valve. Then we've got another temperature pressure relief on the top there. So if there was a problem and it got too hot inside, then it would shoot that out. So those two are the safety devices. I see. And that feels pretty hot up there. Gosh. I was just about to say it stopped flashing. <laughs> that now. So, that uh, feels hotter than 65 degrees. What we should see now is that it's dropped, and indeed it has dropped. We're now on 1.3 watts, so it takes half an hour good to heat timing. up from cold. It was good timing. So we're on 1.5 kilowatt hour, that's a nice round number, to heat up from cold. Yeah. But while I'm in this shit pit of an office, I do have a thermometer, and I can tell you that Nigel's tits are at 32.1 degrees. <laughs> And Philip's nubbin 
Thirty-four, thirty. Right, so over the it shop. Feels warmer than that. Yeah, it's too hot to keep your hand on, isn't it? <laughs> But there you go. So, I suppose, if we run the hot tap, we ought to have hot water, is that right? That's kind of the point, really, isn't it? (laughs) That's not hot, though. That pipe's got nothing in it. Is it supposed to sound like Nigel's asshole? Yeah, just... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, I'd say that's too hot. The bottom pipe. The bottom pipe. That's it. What's that saying? I think your meter's busted. (laughs) Twenty-six point five. Oh, what we're done to it now? I'm going to turn that down a notch actually, because yeah, that's. That's too hot for comfort for hand washing. It still says 65. I don't know. Yeah, I've got to read the that's... fucking manual. There you go. There. What? Well, yeah, that's. All oh, right. That that's what I'm setting it to. Two, and, and that's what it currently is. So if you run that for a minute, then hopefully it should well, flow down. But I won't. I'll uh, I'll leave it to let someone burn the bottles yeah. <laughs> to flow down naturally. I think for hand wash. Is this just for hand washing? Yeah, yeah. And washing up on the odd occasion it's done because we have an electric shower. We have a dishwasher. Uh, I got a wife, so I don't need to do <laughs> you too don't much need it plate above. washing and that sort of thing. What, 45 degrees for washing your hands? Yes, yes. So with it turned down... So well, you should I, turn that down uh, to the second one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, actually, yeah. yeah. That's Because that goes up in fives. Well, it's 50 around. degrees. Yeah. 40, 45, 50, yeah. Yeah, 50 so degrees. Try it at that. You might it? find that's still a bit warm for washing your hands. Well... Yeah. Time will tell, and I'm sure something will be appended to the end of this horrendo <laughs> video. Right, I think your work here is done, is it not, Philip? I believe so. The cat is happy. Nigel's happy. My watch is warmer than your boil. <laughs> Philip's Definitely happy. Something wrong. I'm as happy as I ever get. What are you up to in there, you prick? What do you fucking think I'm doing in here? You better not be smoking or drinking in there, or I'll cut your bollocks off and shove them up your ass. Okay, half an hour long and this bullshit video hardly tells you anything about the fucking lump installed on the wall behind me. Is this a better solution than the old water tank and immersion heater I had before? Was it worth the effort to upgrade? The old setup was a boost immersion, which was time to run for an hour every day at around 1 to 2 p.m. That provided warm water for the evening's demand, while making best use of the power generated by my solar panels when the sun does shine. The immersion used to suck up around 3 kilowatts, which, at today's eye-watering energy rate of 35.483 pence per kilowatt hour, would be up to £1.06 pence per day, as a worst case if the solar energy was being used elsewhere. The disadvantages were that it heated up the water to about 60 degrees, which is too hot for comfort where there isn't a mixer tap. It was gravity fed, which reduced the flow rate. It held a limited capacity that, once exhausted, was gone, unless you manually clicked the timer back on for a while. And if the heated water wasn't used, then it would eventually dissipate into the cold water beneath it after a few hours, leaving nothing for the next morning. I've had the meter on this thing for an average 24-hour weekend period. I'd say busy period before I kicked both daughters out to their respective universities and when the whole family is at home, thus the highest demand being placed. It sucked up 2.67 kilowatt hours over that 24 hour period when set to the minimum of 40 degrees Celsius. Because it's only really for hand washing, there's no need to bump it up higher. And yes, I might also have got away with the 15 litre version of this thing rather than the 30 litre I plumped for. Back in March of this year, I was complaining about my energy company fisting me for 30.524 pence per kilowatt hour. But since 1st of October, they've greased up their forearms and are now up to their elbows at 35.483 pence at peak times. My off-peak, which lasts for 7 hours, has also raised from 19.978 pence to 23.334 pence. If we divide such daylight robbery by 1,000, we get the price per watt for these two periods. For the sake of argument, let's average this out over 24 hours. In reality, it's more likely to be pulling power over peak hours as it's during the day that the water gets drained off, so this may not be a terribly accurate way of calculating the running cost. But what the hell? 
Over a 24 hour period, peak rate applies for 17 hours or 71% of the day. 71% of 2.67 kilowatt hours would be 1.896 kilowatt hours. So the remaining 0.774 kilowatt hours would be off peak. Using the power of arithmetic, we can apply the pennies to the kilowatt hours. Doing so gives us 67.28 pence peak time and 17.98 pence off peak. If we add these together, then we get a running cost of 85 pence per day. As I say though, that assumes even consumption across the 24 hour period, which probably isn't the case. But even if it were running 100% at peak time, it would still be under a quid at 94.74 pence. So the true daily running cost is somewhere between these two figures. During daylight hours, these solar panels offset it further whenever it clicks on and the electrical demand isn't high elsewhere in the house. Oh, it really does go straight through you, this stuff. So the question of was it worth it? Well, it's certainly better than what was here before. It delivers warm water under greater pressure, so it gets to the taps faster. It looks after itself without any external timers, boost controllers or manual intervention. The water temperature is more controllable. The old immersion requiring tools clambering deep into a cupboard and working around live parts to make any adjustments to its thermostat. This uses less energy to provide a ready supply at any time of day and it takes up less physical space. On a build where you don't have gas for a combi boiler, this is a nice solution. Of course, it may never pay for itself in my case, those daily savings being so small against the cost of purchase and professional installation, and the fucking thing will probably break down in a few years before it's earned its keep financially, nothing being made to last these days. Nonetheless, it makes for an interesting thing, if not an interesting video. Sorry about that.